Just as we can solve systems of linear equations and inequalities, we can do the same for quadratics. Now when we start working with quadratics in these systems, we can have a system of a quadratic and a linear, or a system of two quadratics at the same time. Let's look at systems of quadratics and linears to begin with. When we're looking at this, the big question comes is how many solutions can we have? And the graphs here show the different options. First, we can have two solutions where our quadratic function and our linear function intersect each other at two different locations. Second, we could have a single solution where our quadratic and our linear simply touch each other at a single point. This is similar to the concepts of how many solutions do we have when we're solving a quadratic equation at all. And last, we can have a quadratic and a linear that never intersect and give us no solution. So as we work through, we have to see what kind of solution type we're expecting, but understand that we can have these options of 0, 1, or 2. Now shown here are finding solutions using graphing methods. And although graphing is a valid type of solution, it is probably the least useful, as I've stated before, simply because you can't always make a perfect graph when you're constructing it yourself by hand. You need a graphing calculator or a graphing grid already available. So let's look at more practical ways of solving. These come back to substitution and elimination. The most common that we're going to be using will be substitution. So solve each system of equations with substitution. We, first, we have y equals a negative x squared minus 3x plus 10, and y equals x plus 5 as our system. Now, since both of these are equal to y, we can eliminate that or substitute across to make the two right-hand sides equal to each other. So we would have x plus 5 is equal to the opposite of x squared minus 3x plus 10. And wanting to have a positive quadratic value, I'm going to simply add x squared, add 3x, and subtract 10 from each side of my functions. And what this will do is make it so I have a quadratic that is set equal to 0. I will have x squared plus 4x minus 5 equal to 0. And now we can solve this using the methods that we already know. We can use quadratic function. We can graph. Again, graphing is my least favorite. We can factor it. Try a number of different things. Let's try factoring. Do we know two numbers that multiply to negative 5 and add to positive 4? And the answer is yes. We have x plus 5 and x minus 1 equal to 0. Now, solving each one using our zero print, uh, principal property, we have x equals negative 5 or x equals 1. Then what we have to do is take these and substitute them back up into one of the originals, and we would come out with negative 5, 0, simply because negative 5 plus 5 is 0, or negative 25 plus 15 plus 10 comes out to be 0. Or, if we substitute in 1, we'd have 1, 6. Using our bottom equation, if we use the top one, we would have negative 1 minus 3, which is negative 4, plus 10 gives us positive 6. So both of these work back in the original set. Second, what happens when we have a quadratic and quadratic system? Substitution is really going to be one of the best ways of doing this. Now, we can use elimination by adding these together, but let's use substitution because that is going to be much more common. We would have x squared plus 7x plus 12 equals a negative x squared minus x plus 12. Now, wanting everything to be positive as much as possible, we'll move to the right, move everything from the right to the left. So we're going to add x squared, add x, subtract 12. We're going to again add x squared, add x, subtract 12. 
When we simplify this down, we will get 2x squared plus 8x equals 0. What can we do here? We can factor a 2x out of each part, giving us x plus 4 remaining. What does it take to make these 0? Well, x can equal 0, or x can equal negative 4. Then what we'd have to do is go through and check them into the systems. If we substitute in 0, we'll get the point 0, 12. If we substitute in negative 4, on both of them we will get negative 4, 0. So these become our solutions. And remember, it is always important to go back and check to make sure that your work is accurate by assuring that both solutions, or whatever solutions you come up with, do fit into both of your original equations. Now, so far we've been dealing with this in terms of equations, but what happens when we have quadratic inequalities? Let's take a real quick look at that. So here I have a system of quadratic inequalities. y is less than or equal to a negative x squared minus 4x plus 3, and y is greater than x squared plus 3. And what we need to do is graph these, and just like with our linear inequalities, we look for the region of overlap, that's what we will be having here. I choose to graph the second one first. So y is greater than x squared plus 3. This one has a positive 3 for our y-intercept, and it is opening up with a relative change pattern of 1. And what we're going to end up with is a dotted because we are not equal to, and we want the y values that are greater than this, so we will be shading what is in the middle. Next, as we graph the first one, we're going to need to find our vertex and see where it's located at. So let's break this down. Our vertex is our axis of symmetry will be located at negative b over 2a, which in this case will be 4 over a negative 2, and that is negative 2. Substituting that value in to our equation, we come up with a vertex located at 7. So we have negative 2, 7, and we're opening down with a relative change of 1. So we're going to graph this using a solid line, simply because it can be equal to in this case, and our inequality tells us that we're looking at values that are less than this, so we will want to shade what is below this inequality, and look for that area of overlap in the two functions to see what our solutions could be. So we're going to have everything that is inside of this red shaded area for this function and then when we compare that to the overlap of the things that are above our blue dotted line we end up with this region located right here and that is our solution set to this inequality so how many solutions could you get when you're working with linear uh, quadratic inequalities well they could not overlap at all. They could just barely touch if both are equal to options, or they could have an infinite number of solutions in a field, which is what we have here. So, same concepts we've been working with before, just combining our quadratics and our systems of equations into one.